ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وقرنا في بيوتكن ولا تبرجن تبرج الجاهليه الاولى واقمنا الصلاه واتينا الزكاه واطعنا الله ورسوله انما يريد الله ليذهب عنكم الرجس اهل البيت ويطهركم تطهيرا صدق الله العظيم respected brothers sisters and elders السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته let's begin this blessed gathering about the Ahlul Bayt by sending salutation on our beloved Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his family. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahima wa ala ali Ibrahima innaka hamid majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahima wa ala ali Ibrahima innaka hamid majid. Alhamdulillah, all praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who allows us to hold these kind of gatherings in which we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we, we all come just and solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to learn about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to build our connection with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our kalima is based on two things, iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when we have love for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you know, the diff- difference between the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the companions of those that were before him, you know, the prophets that were before him, is that our deen was preserved through the companions, right? And the efforts that the Sahaba radiallahu anhum made to preserve the deen, it's, it's a miracle, the struggle they went through. And from the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam till now, alhamdulillah, you know, we, we've gathered here as a way to learn. And inshallah, we hope that after us, you know, till the day of judgment, these kind of gatherings you know, of, of madaris and makatib, you know, the, the, the khutbah before Jumu'ah, people will attend to learn. Now, when we have, so our, our faith, our deen is built on two things. Number one, belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he, and, and believing in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And secondly, having the love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده وولده والناس يجمعين. That none of you can believe or none of you can be true believers until I become more beloved to him than his father, his son, and everyone else. The everyone else. Whether it's your wife, your children, your friends, everyone else. Now, you know, when you love someone, then everything about that person, right, becomes beloved to you. You know, if someone has nice clothes, uh, you like, you know, the, 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 you know, a husband and wife, a couple who are in love, you know, one of them passes away, the husband passes away, the wife doesn't want to throw the husband's clothes out. Why? Because it reminds her of the husband, doesn't it? She's possessive of them clothes. So when you love someone, then the people connected to that person, you know, that person's possessions, his things or her things, they become beloved to you. And that is true love. That is the essence of true love. That we love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we love everyone and everything about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and everyone connected to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, what are the things that we love about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? His akhlaq. People would go and just see the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam character, 
and just you know uh, become Muslims. Sometimes we give too much focus to you know his physical appearance or he, the physical sunnas. Well, what about his akhlaq? The thing that made people accept Islam just by looking at him, his manners. And after him, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, their akhlaq, their honesty. Right? So when we love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we love everything about him. And those that are connected to him. This is why we love the Sahaba. And this is why we love the Ahlul Bayt. Who are the Ahlul Bayt? The close family members of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why do we, you know, in our life, we probably heard, you know, hundreds of times about Abu Bakr, and Umar, and Uthman. We've attended, you know, tens of bayans and gatherings about their life. But we keep going back to them. Perhaps we don't learn anything new. <laughs> Perhaps we've mastered their life and we know everything about them. But we keep going to their gatherings. We keep going to gatherings about Aisha's life and all the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why? Because this is our way of showing our love for those connected to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And who was more closer to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam than his Ahlul Bayt? Who was more beloved to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam than the people of his family? His children, you know, his son-in-law, you know, his grandchildren, you know, who the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam called "rihanati min al dunya," you know, my sweet-smelling flowers of this dunya, the thing that brings me pleasure in this dunya. Who was more beloved to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam than that woman, you know, in whose lap he breathed his last breath? Aisha radhiyallahu anha. So today, inshallah, and the next several uh, halaqas, I want to spend uh, you know some time going through the lives, but not just the lives. It's not a you know in depth biography uh, and, 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 and biography of the life. You know, I'm just going to tell you A to Z of when they were born and what they did and you know when they passed away. No, you know, we don't have time for that, unfortunately. The Ahlul Bayt, there's so much to cover. You know, so. But in our short halaqas, there's only so much that we can actually cover. So I hope that we can learn you know, something about the life. For me, this is exciting as well. Why? Because when I'm preparing for these halaqas, there's so much new things that are coming for me. Right? So I'm benefiting from this myself. And this is something I've been wanting to do for a, for a while now. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the love of the Ahlul Bayt. And... and Raises on the day of judgment with them, with the Sahaba and with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, what exactly does Ahlul Bayt mean? There's two words here: Ahl and Bayt. Firstly, Bayt it refers to a house, right? In Arabic, you say Bayt. If you study Arabic, uh, the first thing you learn is Hada Baytun. This is a house, right? Hada Kursiyun. You know, this kind of stuff. These are this is what you learn. So, Bayt is a house, and the word Ahl. Or sometimes we'll say al, right? It means uh, family. It can also mean followers. It can mean someone's wife, someone's children. And in the Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He uses this word al or ahl for you know different um, uh, family members. If you look, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He says about Lut alayhi salam, فَأَنْجَيْنَاهُ وَأَهْلَهُ that we saved him and his family. When the adab came, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told Lut to leave in the night. So Allah saved Lut alayhi salam and his family. <coughs> Except his wife. Allah is telling us that she, yes, she was part of his family. right? But he did not save her. <coughs> she was from those that were destroyed. Allah says, he's mentioning Musa alayhi salam when he's returning. To the Pharaoh, uh, he says he, he's traveling with his wife. He says, "Fakala li ahlihim kuthu inni anastu naran." That he said to his family, right? Who was his family? Who was with him at the time? His wife. His wife was traveling with him, 
So Allah again uses this word Ahl here to refer to Musa al-Salam's wife. Allah says again regarding Musa al-Salam, Musa al-Salam made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, you're sending me on a great mission. You know, I need support. He said, وَجْعَلْ لِي وَزِيرًا مِّنْ أَهْلِي That makes someone from my family who will be my support. And who did Allah make? A prophet? Harun alayhi salam, his brother. So here, the word Ahl, it first is family. But who did Allah pick from his family? His brother. Ibrahim alayhi salam. When the angels came to his house, you know, I don't want to get into the event, but you know, something happened that will, I'm sure you guys have heard before. And him and his wife, they had some fear. That who are, what is this creation? You know, who are these people? So what did they say? They said, Rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu alaykum ahl al bayt. That, oh Ibrahim and his wife, you know, that may Allah's mercy and may Allah's barakat be on you, O oh people of the house. So here Allah refers to, uh, the, the angels refer to Ibrahim and his wife as Ahlul Bayt. And again, we can find this, you know, throughout the Quran being used. But interestingly, Allah uses the word Al. And Al and Ahl, they have the same meaning for Fir'aun. Allah says, وَحَاقَ بِآلِ فِرْعَوْنَ سُوءُ الْعَذَابِ That Allah, you know, gave a severe punishment to Ali Fir'aun. Who's Allah referring to here by Ali Fir'aun? Pharaoh, it does, right? But who's the Al here? It is his, not just his family, Imam Tabari, who comments on this, he says, the Al here is actually those who followed him. So not just his family, but Al here also refers to those who followed him. This is why when we, you know, when we recite Salat Ibrahimiyya, we recite Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. One of the interpretations is that Ali Muhammad here is not just the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa immediate family, but everyone who followed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam till the day of Qiyamah. Right? So Al can also mean family, it can also mean followers. But when it comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, before we start talking about Ahlul Bayt, it's important to know who are we, who, who's included in the Ahlul Bayt, right? So we can know that, you know, who are we talking about? So when it comes to the Prophet's family, simply put, it refers to those upon whom zakat was haram. Upon whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made taking zakat haram. Where do we find this? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna hadhihi sadaqat, inna ma hiya awsaakhu nasi wa inna ha la tahillu li muhammadin wa la li ali muhammad. That you know when we have sadaqah, right? Why do we give sadaqah? What, what benefit do we get out of sadaqah? Of course, we get sawab, right? We get sawab. And his reward and all the fadail of sadaqah. One of the virtues and merits of sadaqah is that if any haram income has come into our, our wealth, if we've done something that's haram and that's come to our wealth, through that sadaqah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purifies our wealth. Now, it doesn't mean that we go and do drugs and we say, okay, let me just give 10 grand from that drug money. It's okay, it's pure now. No. And people have this kind of mentality. Let me give 20 grand to the masjid. Khalas. You know, I've given my, purified my wealth, my drugs for the, I have HMC drugs, you know, all pure. No. But, but, one of the benefits of sadaqah and zakat is that it purifies our wealth. This is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that this sadaqah that people give, this is the impurities of people that Allah removes through the sadaqah. Right? This is why it's not jayz for the Prophet Muhammad to take zakat and it's not jayz for his al, his family to take zakat. So we look at the hadith of Zaid bin Arqam, he was asked the Sahabi that who, you know, who is included? Who does the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mean by al? So the Prophet, uh, so Zaid bin Arqam, he said that first of all, you know, it's the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but secondly, it, there are also five families from the Banu Hashim. Five families. Who are these fa five families? First of all, does anyone want to... I'll open this. Anyone know these five families? His uncles. His uncles. But who are the families? They're known. 
Which which uncles? There's two of them that are included. Abu Talib. Not Abu Talib. Uh, uh, Abbas. Abbas is one. Abbas, his uncle, right? Abbas bin what was his father's name? Abdul Muttalib. He was one of them. So Ab Abbas, but Hamza is not included in the Ahlul Bayt in, in in terms of those upon Sadqa's uh, haram because he passed away really early. We're talking about those who survived, right? From those, of course, Hamza is from the Ahlul Bayt, you know, but we're talking about those who survived. So Abbas, the Prophet ﷺ, uncle, he's from Ahlul Bayt, and all of the children of Abbas, they're also from the Ahlul Bayt, right? Okay, who else? There's another Abu Talib's children, three of them. Which one? Jafar, Jafar bin Abu Talib, Ali radiallahu anhu, and one more. Aqil. 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 Right? Aqil is the biggest one. Yeah. That's right. Jazakallah khairan. Barakallah Oh, but there's one more uncle left. Right? So we have th um, two uncles of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and three cousins. Right? Ali radiallahu anhu. All three cousins are from the progeny, their children of Abu Talib. So Ali bin Abi Talib. Aqil bin Abi Talib. And Ja'far bin Abi Talib. A last uncle who's the son of Abdul Muttalib. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, Abu Lahab. Some ulama have said that Abu Lahab's two sons, they became Muslim at the time of Fat of after Fat Makkah, and that's why they included. But you know, that's only the two uh, sons. But here, there's another uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that wanna that's mentioned. Harith. 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 Okay. So the five families from Banu Hashim upon whom. Um, uh, Sadqa is haram, zakat is haram are Ali radiallahu anhu and his children. All of the children of Ali radiallahu anhu. Not just Hassan or Hussein. This is important to know. You know, our Shia brothers, may Allah guide them, they exclude so many people from the Ahlul Bayt. For them, it's only Hussein radiallahu anhu's progeny, and not Hassan's. And from Hussein radiallahu anhu's progeny is the 12 Imams, but which inshallah in the future I want to look at. Right? They take away, they exclude all of the other uh, uh, you know, children of, uh, of the, uh, the part and people who are part of Ahlul Bayt. Okay? So, to summarize, Ahlul Bayt includes the wives of the Prophet وسلم, which the Shias, they, 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 they exclude. Right? The Ahlul Bayt include Hassan, Hussein, Ali, and Fatima. And these were the people known as Ahlul Kisa. The, those that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he wrapped his cloth around them. They include in the Ahlul Bayt are also the children or, and the progenies of those five that we mentioned. Now, according to some ulama, they extend this and they say everyone who became a Muslim from the, the Banu Hashim they're all part of the Ahlul Bayt. But the majority view is that is only these five. Whatever the case. You know, we do know for sure that these are the five that are mentioned that are part of Ahlul Bayt. The rest, if they're part of not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Well, I think when Aunt uh, Sophia is also considered because she was uh, survived and she's, she's the first Muslim, you know, yep. and she, uh, she married to the bear bin Laban. So, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, for, you know, she, I think they considered that as well, you know. Yes. I, I heard somewhere. Yes. Now, if you look in the hadith, you know, now it's important to you know discuss uh, are the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam included in the Ahlul Bayt? We know they were you know his wives, but are they part of you know the Ahlul Bayt that Allah subhanahu wa taala has promised reward for, uh, reward for? Right, this is important. Why? Right? Because for for believers, for all Muslims, the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam are umul mu'minin. They are mothers of the believers, right? This is why, you know, if, if your father gets married to a woman, right? Other than your mother, right? She get, he gets married to another woman. Even after he passes away, it's haram for a person to marry that woman, right? It's haram for him to marry. Why? Because that's his mother now, right? Because his father got married to her. Similarly, the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, during his life, you know, if he divorced someone, 
And even after he passed away, it was haram upon anyone to marry him. This is why Aisha radiallahu anha. She was, when the Prophet, when the Prophet says passed away, she was you know, really young, hardly 20. But you know, her entire life, she never got married again. Why? Because she's the mother of the believers. So you know, we find in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa you know, in many a hadith, he referred to his own wives, right, as his ahl. You know, Aisha radiallahu anha, when she was slandered, you know, during the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa she was slandered and accused of committing zina. Na'udhu billah min zalik. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, he exonerated her. And, you know, those who were involved in this slander, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he, you know, he exposed them. Right? This was during the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa What do you think about those that you know, still slander our mother Aisha radiallahu anha and those that go to the extent of calling her a kafir na'udhu billah min dhalik So when she was slandered the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he stood up in the masjid and he said Ya ma'ashar al-Muslimin that O oh believers O oh group of believers مَنْ يَعْذِرُنِي مِنْ رَجُلٍ قَدْ بَلَغَ أَذَاهُ فِي أَهْلِ بَيْتِهِ That who will, you know, exonerate me from the accusations that this person has made towards my ahl, my family. Right? He used ahl. And then he said, مَا عَلِمْتُ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِ إِلَّا خَيْرًا That my wife, you know, I've only known good from her. Right? So the munafiqoon, and unfortunately, even some believers, right, they were involved in the slander. They were caught up in this. So the Prophet ﷺ, he stood up and said, who's going to, you know, uh, f- uh, protect me and protect my family from these, the, this, this slander and this, these accusations? In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he entered upon his family, his wives, and he said, Assalamu alaikum ahl al bayt wa rahmatullah. You know. So we find... In the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself, referring to his his wa- his wives as the Ahlul Bayt, we look in the Quran, and the main verse in the Quran which speaks directly to the Ahlul Bayt, Allah subhanahu wa taala, he begins this 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 ayah. It starts by addressing the wives. Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "Waqarna fi buyuti kunna, wa la tabarrajna tabarruj al jahiliyat al ula." That, O oh, wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, stay in your homes and do not go out like the women used to do, you know, with their, with their ornaments and, you know, their jewelry and, you know, uh, without proper cover like women used to do in the time of Jahiliyyah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَقِمْنَا الصَّلَاةَ وَأَعْتِينَا الزَّكَاةَ وَأَطِعْنَا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ and you know, establish your prayer, give sadaqah, and be obedient to Allah and His Messenger. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّدْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَهِّرَكُمْ تَطْهِرًا That Allah wishes to, you know, remove any kind of impurity from you, O Ahlul Bayt. And Allah wants to purify you completely. Right? Allah says, وَيُطَهِرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا Right? He, he uses the word تَطْهِير First he says, يُطَهِرُكُمْ And then تَطْهِيرًا He brings it as a مفعول Why? To, to emphasize And this is what you do in Arabic Right? You bring the verb as a مفعول again to, to emphasize the act We find in this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He's addressing the wives and then first he's addressing the wives so he tells them to you know stay in your houses do not go out like women in the days of ignorance to go out and then he says you know to establish prayer to give zakat and to and be obedient to Allah and his messenger and then he says oh Ahlul Bayt Allah wants to purify you and remove all impurities from you now this ayah for you know the by ijma' of the Ahlul Sunnah, by consensus of the Ahlul Sunnah, this ayah it refers to Ahlul Bayt, but it's not only, even though the context 
refers to who? The wives, right? The context is the wives. But it's not restricted to the wives. It, in, it includes everyone inside this. And how do we know this? Because the Prophet sallallahu Aisha radiallahu anha, she narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was sitting once and Hassan came and, you know, he, and he was wearing um, a black cloth which was striped and Hassan came and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam put his cloth around him and then Hussein came and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he took him in his cloth and then Fatima came and Fatima interestingly is from which wife? Fatima is Khadija radiallahu anha Right, the, the first wife of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. She's the daughter of Khadija. So Fatima came, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam took her in. And then Ali radiallahu anhu came. And then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam again, you know, he took him in as well. He wrapped the cloth around him, and then he recited the ayah. He recited that Inna ma yuridu Allahu yudhiba ankum rids ahl al bayti wa yutahirakum tathira. That Allah wants to purify you, O Ahlul Bayt. And, you know, He wants to remove all, any kind of impurities from you. Now, when we look at this, this hadith, some of our Shia brothers, may Allah guide them, they looked at this hadith and said, well, this is proof that only Ali, Fatima, and Hassan and Hussein are part of the Ahlul Bayt. At least during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that's it. Why? Because he wrapped them, and then he recited this ayah. Why did he not recite this ayah to his wives, right, etc.? Now, this objection is such a weak objection. Why? Because when we look at the, when we analyze the the, the ayah, right, and the context of the surah, it's, it comes in surah Ahzab. Four ayahs before this ayah, it addresses the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, which we're going to look at in a short while. The ayah itself, right? وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتِكُنَّ Right? The ayah itself, it addresses the wives of the Prophet ﷺ. How many times? It addresses وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتِكُنَّ There's two there, okay? It's two. وَقَرْنَ um, uh, It addresses women, right? It's a verb that's used to address women. Fibu to kunna. Kunna, it refers to, you use it for, it's a feminine. Wala tabarraja tabarraja jahiliya, third time. Wa aqimna salat, fourth time. Wa atina zakat, fifth. Wa ta'ana Allah wa rasula. Right, six times. It addresses whom? The wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is Allah going to, you know, address the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the entire context, and then suddenly, out of nowhere, exclude them in the same ayah in the same ayah exclude them and just refer to Hassan, Hussein, Ali and Fatima linguistically it makes no sense then you know uh, the objection the Shia brothers will make is that well before Allah was using the you know he was addressing them using feminine uh, you know uh, huruf right then why does Allah change from uh, from aqimna, right, and and beauty kunna to ankum. Kunna is used for feminine. Ankum is masculine, right? If that was the case, this is what they say that if that was the case that he was referring to women here as well, why does he change from feminine to masculine? Again, this is a an extremely weak objection. Why? Because in the Arabic language, right, when we have the masculine, when we use masculine whether it's a masculine verb or a masculine noun, right? Or the huruf, the particles, then this is not to exclude. Rather, this is to include, include men and women. So when Allah moves away from you just, you know, feminine particles to masculine particles, He moves away from just addressing the, the women to those, the men who are also part of the Ahlul Bayt. Now this is just like in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he's talking about uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam and his wife, you know, he says, Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh alaykum ahlul bayt. 
that Allah's mercy and Allah's barakah upon you, Ahlul Bayt, right? Because it includes Ibrahim and his wife. The question also, you know, there's also another question that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to exclude the wives from this ayah, right? He wanted to exclude the women, then why is Fatima part of this ayah, alayhi salam? She's also a woman. Shouldn't she also be excluded? Yet she's included. If she's included, then why are the wives also not included? And she, the wives are actually more worthy of being included. Why? Because the ayahs before this you know, are directly addressing the wives. Now, the Shia brothers, they will object that, okay, what about the hadith? Why did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam only take Hassan, Hussein, Ali and Fatima? Why did he not include in his cloth his wives? Well, the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are not mahram of Ali radiallahu anhu. They are not the you know, mother-in-laws of Ali radiallahu anhu. Why would the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam include you know, someone his wives in the same cloth as Ali radiallahu anhu when they're not mahram right they have no relationship right so the point is that the ayah in surah ahzab refers to the ahlul kisa those the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam took in his in his cloth it refers to the wives of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it also includes the five families from uh, Banu Hashim. Now, what are the merits and virtues of the Ahlul Bayt? You know, the greatest merit that the Ahlul Bayt have is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He addresses them, He praises them in the Quran. What greater merit can anyone have? What greater blessing can anyone have? You know, if, you know, um, uh, we have now in sports and, you know, uh, all sorts of you know fields we have the wall of fame right as someone who's retired but they've done amazing you know they've broken all the records the name comes in the hall of fame and people remember them and this is a great honor for these you know whatever sport you're into now imagine your merit you're addressed in the quran what greater blessing can you have and which will be recited till the day of judgment. We find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, He said He tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ulla asalukum alayhi ajran illa al mawadda fil qurba. That tell the people that I'm not asking you for a wage. I'm not asking you for any you know anything from you, any wealth from you. No. All I'm asking from you is that you honor the kinship that you we have. Who is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi addressing here? He's addressing you know, his own family who didn't believe in him. You know, his relatives, uncles. He's addressing them that you know that the relationship that we have, I want you to you know, honor this relationship. Now, if the, the relationship between the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and those that he did not believe in if that relationship should be honored, then what about those that believed in the Prophet ﷺ? Those that were part of the family who are included in the Ahlul Bayt. Their merits and their virtues are far greater. You know, we're told to honor those that didn't believe in the Prophet ﷺ, right? But the Prophet ﷺ telling them to honor this, right? What about those? that did believe in the Prophet right? Their virtues are far greater. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He addresses the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, without getting into details. Certain stuff happened, and you know, there was a disagreement between the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his wives, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, as is the case with every single couple, right? That you have some argument, and that's human nature, right? At, at the end of the day, the Prophet ﷺ, just like all the Prophets, he was human, right? And his wives, they were also humans. And they had the same habits, they had the same emotions as 
any other human being. So some disagreement happened between the Prophet ﷺ and his wives. And the Prophet ﷺ, he was upset with them for a short while. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he revealed some verses addressing them. He said, Ya ayyuhal nabiyu. He addressed the Prophet ﷺ. O Prophet, قُلْ لِي أَزْوَاجِكَ إِن كُنْتُنَّ تُرِدْنَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَزِينَتَهَا فَتَعَالَيْنَا أُمَتِّعْكُنَّ وَصَرِّحْكُنَّ صَرَاحًا جَمِيلًا that all wives of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If what you seek is the dunya, and you want you know wealth and comfort, and you want beauty in this dunya and ease in this dunya, then no problem. You'll be given your compensation, right? And that's it. You know, no problem. Come and seek your compensation. What whatever you want, you'll get your compensation, and that's it. But. وَإِن كُنْتُنَّ تُرِدْنَ الْحَيَاةَ تُرِدْ تُرِدْنَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَالدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ أَعَدَّ لِلْمُحْسِنَاتِ مِنْ كُنَّ أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا But if what you seek is Allah and His Messenger and what you seek, O oh wives of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, if you seek the Akhirah, if that's what you seek, then Allah says that we've prepared, right? Ajr and Azimah. This is Allah's telling them directly that we've prepared for you the, an amazing, a great reward. And then Allah addresses them directly. He says, Ya Nisa and Nabi, may yati min kunna bi fahishat in mubayinatin, you da'af lahil adabu da'afaini, wa kana dalika ala Allah yasira. Oh, wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, you know when you have you know, sometimes you have close, you, everyone has close friends, and sometimes you have people that you, you know, you're friends with, but you're not so close. You maybe see them at the masjid, you see them at work, and that's it, right? Or you have a cousin that you're really close to, and some of your cousins, you, you know, you see them at Eid time or wedding, or, you know, uh, see them at janazah, and that's it, right? The cousin that you're close to, the friend that you're close to, if he does something, right? You become way more upset with that. If he hurts you, or you know, he backbites about you, you know, he says something about you, you become way more upset with the one that you're close to than the one that you know you're not so close to. It doesn't really matter. Allah tells the wise the Prophet because of the status that you have, because you're in the in the house of prophethood, if you do anything right. Then, if you do anything, anything wrong, then the adab that you will get is du'fain, is double. Whatever adab, what punishment a normal woman would have got, right? You will get double that punishment. Why? Because you're in a special status. You're in the house of prophethood. Quran is being revealed in your house. So, if you don't recognize the status that you have, he's telling the wives of the Prophet, if you don't recognize the status that you have, the maqam that you have, then you know, you have double the punishment coming for you. And then Allah tells him, وَمَنْ يَقْنُدْ مِنْ كُنَّا لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتَعْمَلْ صَالِهَا نُؤْتِهَا أَجْرَهَا مَرَّتَيْنِ وَأَعْتَدْنَا لَهَا رِزْقًا قَرِيمًا Similarly, you know, whoever is, you know, obedient to Allah and His Messenger, and, you know, she does good, then just like we would have punished her for, we would have given a double punishment for doing something haram, because of your status, you will get your reward twice. That you will get your, your ajr twice. And on top of that, Allah says, That we've prepared for her, for her you know, an honorable provision. Right? Look, at the, look how Allah is addressing the wives. Right? That if you do something haram, then your punishment will be double. But if you do good, then your ajr will also be double. Why? Because of your status. You know, just like in Ramadan, what happens to our rewards? We get double and triple and seven times and seventy times more. But similarly, if we do haram in Ramadan, we also get double the, the, the punishment, double the sin. Why? Because of the, our the, the state that we're in. You know, in salah, if we laugh, what happens if we laugh? Our salah breaks first of all, but our wudu also breaks. 
What's laughing got to do with wudu? Why does wudu break? It's because of the state you were in. You were standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? You didn't recognize right, the state. And you took it lightly. This is why as a punishment, an extra punishment, your, your wudu breaks, go and repeat wudu again. And start again. Why? Because of the state you're in. Similarly, the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses them. That because of your maqam, your, you have the greatest of Allah's creation. That's your husband in this dunya and the akhirah. You know, if you don't recognize, you know, the kamal is not in the, in the wives themselves. Before they became Muslims or before they married the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were just normal women. Before they became Muslim, they were non-Muslim women. Right? Where did the kamal come from? Where did the greatness come from? It's the marriage, it's the link that they have with the Prophet ﷺ. This is why my brothers and sisters, you know, how we, what we believe about the, the Sahaba, about the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, and the Ahlul Bayt, why is it such, such an you know, important issue? Right? Why is swearing at the Sahaba so dangerous for someone's Iman? Right? The most controversial of the Sahaba, doesn't matter which Sahabi is, even the most controversial of the Sahaba, you know, abusing them, swearing at them, is so dangerous. Why? It's not because of themselves, of the individual themselves, it's because of the link that they had with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anything that has a link with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it becomes honorable, and it's something that we must honor. We look at the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he talks about Ahlul Bayt. He says that, Inna Allah istafa min waladi Ibrahim Ismail. That Allah, from the progeny of Ibrahim Ismail, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He chose Ismail as the greatest. Wastafa min waladi Ismail Bani Kanana. That from the progeny of Ismail, He chose the tribe of Bani Kanana. And He chose from the Bani Kanana, the Quraysh, as the most honorable of people. And the, as the leaders, right? The Quraysh were the leaders. Everyone used to come to them. And, and, and you know, everyone just, just recognized them as the leaders. And then the Prophet ﷺ says, وَاصْطَفَى مِن قُرَيْشْ بَنِي هَاشِمْ That Allah chose from the Quraysh the Banu Hashim. And وَاصْطَفَانِ مِن بَنِي هَاشِمْ From the Banu Hashim, Allah chose me as the greatest. Now, if the Prophet ﷺ is the greatest, then everyone and everything connected to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whether that's through blood whether that's his nasal that's his progeny right whether that's Fatima, Hassan, Hussein or the children of Hassan, the children of Hussein everyone is part of this has this fasila, uh, this fadila and what is that? that Allah has chosen them Allah is not just going to choose any random women to be the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah is not going to just choose anyone to be from the children of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We find that in the when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he moved in Medina, many many events took place. And he would often when he moved to Medina, he would often receive you know delegations. People would come from far away, you know, sometimes with, with the people from their tribes and they would come with you know family members and you know, sometimes you know, a group of youngsters would come, sometimes you know, uh, scholars would come from other faiths. In one incident, uh, a delegation of Christian scholars came, and they were known as, you know, they came from a place called Najran, and this is known as the Waft of Najran, the delegation of Najran. So they came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he hosted them in, in his masjid. They stayed with him and they debated, right? Went back and forth. And you know, they challenged the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This you know lasted for a few days. And you know, he answered their objections. In the end, when they refused to listen to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they kept on debating and arguing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he revealed an ayah in the Quran. He said, فَمَنْ حَاجَكَ فِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ That 
after all the signs that we've given you, after all the objections that we've answered of theirs, if they still continue to debate with you and argue with you, فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْ نَدْعُوا أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ Then you know what? Let, forget the debating. What we'll do is we'll do a mubahla. What is mubahla? It's a mutual sort of a cursing match in which what we'll do is we will call our children, we'll call our wives and the women folk in our, from our families. You call your children and women from your family and we'll do du'at wa oh Allah. Whoever is the liar here, whoever is you know, wrong here, then may your curse be upon him. This is what the Prophet says and challenge them. Say, okay, if you believe this, then come on, let's do this. You're not going to listen to me. Let's, this is the extent it got to. So the Prophet وسلم, they said, okay, you know what? Give us a day and tomorrow we'll discuss this. So the next day, the Prophet وسلم, he brought right, Hassan, he brought Hussein, he brought Fatima, and he brought Ali radiallahu anhu. And he brought him to the masjid. And he said, Allahumma haula yahli. That, oh Allah, this is my ahl. This is my family. This is enough. This is who I've brought. But when the Christian scholars, they saw this, they said, you know, they became scared. And they said, you know what? There is no, no Nabi ever curses the people. No Prophet has ever cursed the people. Except that that's the end of their life. That's the end of them. So even if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even if he's, you know, not a Prophet, then you know what? Let's just avoid it. Leave it. Just in case it is. Right? It's not going to cause any harm if he's not a Prophet. Right? Let's, we're not going to do this. Right? They saw the family of the Prophet وسلم, and they said, yeah, you know, no one is going to bring the family and you know be so you know ready to this to to, to, to invoke the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? This is what they saw. We find in the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that the Prophet وسلم, you know he once he stood up, he gathered everyone. And he was delivering the khutbah. And he said that, Ya Yuhannas, O people, you know, I'm a human. And it's possible that soon Allah's messenger is going to come, you know, and he's going to take my soul. And I'm going to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what I'm leaving behind is two thaqaleen, two extremely weighty things. Number one, the Quran of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? The Quran. It contains guidance. It contains nur. So hold on to it firmly. And the second thing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said is that, Udhakkirukumullah fi ahli. Udhakkirukumullah fi ahli. 